morning, Hyattsville Middle School. Mr. Durkin, math teacher here and math department chair, ready to get you fired up, get you warmed up for the MSA, which is Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. So come out, get ready to do your best, show what you know, what you've been learning all year, and what your teachers have taught you, and do your best. Now that we're warmed up, we're going to look at a couple types of problems that we're going to see. We're going to see uh, selected response questions like this one. I have to look at uh, this question and figure out which coordinate plane represents the linear relationship of y equals 2x plus 4. So knowing what I know, what I've been taught this year, this first number right here next to the x is the slope of the equation. And I'm going to write directly on my paper because I know I can write directly in the test book and that's the best way to show my interaction with the question, to underline and circle what's important and to label what I know. I know that, that this number right here is the slope, and I know that this number right here is the y-intercept. So if I know that this is the slope and the y-intercept, I'm going to be looking for one of these graphs to figure out which one has a slope of a positive 2 and a y-intercept of a positive 4. So looking at this graph, this line crosses at negative 4, so that's not correct. If I look over here, I can see that this graph has a y-intercept of a negative 2, not 4, so that's incorrect. And I'm making x's right on these to make sure that I'm eliminating incorrect answers. Then I'll go to b, and I see that this cross is at a positive 2. That's not correct, because I'm still looking for this y-intercept of a positive 4. So I go to d, and I see that d has a y-intercept of a positive 4. And the slope is rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1. That makes d correct and I would bubble in D right there because that has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of a positive 4. So remember, write directly in your test book, eliminate correct, incorrect answers, and try to find the correct one. Another type of question we're going to see is the ECR. So this one has two bullets and as your teachers have taught you, perhaps you can separate your answer space into two parts where you're going to answer bullet one and bullet two. So you can do that right there, label bullet one and bullet two, and now you can show exactly what you are going to do in your first bullet your second bullet to stay organized and answer the question correctly. So this question we're looking at, uh, the diameter of a circular pizza is 16 inches, and what is the area of this pizza? First thing I need to know is my area formula. So I'm going to come down here in bullet one and write area equals pi times the radius squared. It's a formula for area. Make sure you remember the area of a circle, circumference of a circle, volume of a cylinder, 8th grade students. Coming in, I'm going to substitute 8 for my radius, and I'm going to substitute that correctly right there because that's half of the diameter, and I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. And I can multiply that, that out and find the area. Now for bullet 2, there's an extension. I'm going to make sure to read this carefully, underlining the important words in the problem like so, and then making sure to go and answer bullet two, step B, right here, and making sure that I keep my work organized and write a good summary sentence to make sure that I explain how or justify why my answer is correct. Our third type of question is the SPR. And that's where I have to grid in my answer right here, including these number boxes and the uh, bubbles down below where I'm going to fill in the correct answer. So when you interact with these questions, make sure you write your answers, uh, your, your numbers, or your symbols like this fraction bar and this decimal right across the top and make sure you bubble it in carefully as well. This problem deals with probability. If there are 60 pieces of candy in a bag, with 25 red, 11 blue, and 9 green. The remaining pieces are yellow. Nina will randomly pick one piece of candy from the bag. And now I need to figure out what is the probability this piece will be yellow. Well, if 60 are, we have 60 total, and there are 25 and 11 and 9 green, then I can add 25 plus 11 plus 9 to get 45. The rest are yellow. 
So that means that 60 subtract 45 is 15. That means I have 15 yellow. So this probability is 15 out of 60. When I grid in this answer, I'm going to start from the left. Start from the leftmost box. And I'm going to grid in 1, 5, slash, 6, 0. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make sure to bubble in the numbers for 1 and 5, the fraction bar, the 6, and the 0. Making sure to bubble in these bubbles completely and making sure that it matches your answer here. And if you're going to change anything, make sure to erase up top and in your box. So again, make sure to underline and circle important information in the questions. Make sure to eliminate incorrect answers. Make sure to show all your work directly on your paper. Don't rely on that calculator too much. Show your work directly on your paper. Then you can use the calculator for your calculations. But first you need to get organized and settled here. So remember how to answer the three different types of questions. Your teachers have prepared you. You've prepared yourself. Now go out there, work up a sweat today on your test to do your absolute best and hit a home run with an advanced score on the MSN.